Would you fucking believe it? It finally arrived. I ordered the milk veal, pre-ordered the milk veal melees, melees? However you want to pronounce it, quite a while ago. What I didn't expect is um, this space otter, which is pretty sick. So this has finally arrived. I don't actually stock it, by the way. You, if you want to get one of these, uh, probably Erase is one of the best places to get it. So A-R-A-C-E dot tech. They've currently got it on special for 123 Australian, which is US, uh, let me just convert it, 80 bucks US, which is pretty good. So this has got a uh, T head, TH1520 in it, and kind of the next step up in the Risk Five venture. And even as they say, uh, where is it here? Embarking on the, yeah, embarking on the Risk Five cosmic journey. I mean, hence the, the planet names and the, the Space Otter and m Milk, because that makes sense. Um, now this is actually quite interesting. It's got it's quad core, 1.85 gigahertz. It's also got a C906 that it uses as uh, the audio interface processor. So it integrates a Ford uh, Tops NPU, which is pretty stock standard these days. It's got fast recovery as well. So it's got uh, SD card slot, EMMC slot, and SPI flash. And the SPI flash is apparently pre-flash with the image out of the box. Um, I did also get one of their 128 gig um, EMMCs, just in case the flash isn't too fast, up to eight gig of RAM, which is the model that I got, because this also does 4K HDMI output. Uh, so this could be quite useful. Onboard Wi-Fi, it's Wi-Fi 5, but I mean, so be it. It's not like you're gonna be pushing hundreds of gigs of data with one of these. HDMI 2.0, 4K 60fps, which I'm excited about. MIPI DSi 4 lane, so you can have a high resolution uh, LCD attached to it. 3.5mm TRS, a 1 lane and a 2 lane MIPI, sorry, one 4 lane and one 2 lane MIPI CSI inputs. So that means it can do the really high resolution cameras, which I'm quite happy about. As you know, I've been chasing these 4 lane MIPI CSI inputs. And 4 USB 3 ports. So this is basically... A computer like this is the new Risk Five SBC that so far pretty much takes the mark. Now I do have a pile of others over there to test out. The next couple of weeks worth of videos are going to be the new Banana Pie, a new uh, yet to be named industrial SBC that will do 70 degrees Celsius and keep ticking over, um, and some actually something else from these guys coming out soon as well. So there's going to be a lot of really good Risk Five stuff because it's becoming mainstream. Debian 13 has got to drop soon and. Uh, Ubuntu is fully supporting it. This is how it's all going. Now, now before we go any further, I do just want to thank PCBWay. They're continuing to be good sports. They're supporting this channel, supporting you guys getting this content for free. And I say you guys, not being, you know, nothing against women, but legitimately 100% of my viewers, according to YouTube, are men. 0% women, which is hilarious. So if there are women out there watching it, I'm really glad to hear it. Don't comment about it, because you'll probably get spammed by, you know, all the other dickheads that aren't women. Um... But no, they, they support this. They're, they're paying for me to make these videos. And they also make great products. So I've now got two more products I'm designing with them, which are going to be coming out soon. And they're add-ons to SBC. So they're going to be suitable for all of us to use. So thank you, PCBWay. So it's touting a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, it supports all the standard Onyx-based neural networks, which are becoming pretty common. So you can grab those from nearly anywhere online now. And their resources have a lot of links to GitHub repos and things like that for it. This, though is the first one I've seen that looks like a product where you can unbox it, plug it in, and use it straight away. So I'm just gonna have a quick look now. It's rated for five volts, four amps over the USB type C. It does have a little uh, two pin JST for the fan, and it's got a little switch to flick between the boot modes. It's then got the standard recovery key, reset keys, things like that. So instead of me just reading the specs, let's bust it open and actually have a look. So nice little box as well. I'll split that plastic, shred it, and let's see what their packaging is like. This would be a great uh, Risk V Docker host, I reckon. It's got everything you need for that. It just, I mean, in my perspective, from my perspective, it depends what Linux kernel their image comes with. Oh, that box is a bit of a tire fit. There we go. All right. So there's nothing else in the box. There is just the anti-static bag and the product. It's got your standard Pi 2 header, uh, which is excellent. It's got the Wi-Fi antenna built on. And just having a look at this, it looks pretty nice. So it's a full size HDMI output. I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, let's get a bit of a closer look up here. Let's 
So you can see the SOC, the RAM, um, oh, some of it's right way up, some of it's not. It's a pretty nice looking board. So you've got USB-C power. It's kind of hard to see, but that's a DSi there, DS, uh, DSi and CSi. Bit confused, just trying to figure out what's where. So that's obviously your EMMC there. You've got your four USB ports, uh, PoE support, that would be. So you pipe your head out PoE pins for that. That's for your fan. Okay, so that's one of the CSI connectors there. So it doesn't use the normal ones. You're not going to be able to plug any of your existing cameras straight into it. You're going to need a special ribbon cable. So, all right, yeah, I can just see the labels now. That's your DSI. That's your CSI 2, that's your CSI 1. But the full-size HDMI is what I'm going to be using, and I will find some or make some adapter ribbons for this. Uh, now, you're going to have your boot selection switch. You've got a key uh, recovery button there. Is that recovery? Can't quite tell. All right, let's just plug this in and see what it does out the box. So they say to get your HDMI into it before you apply power, and that it's pre-flashed, so it should just boot. Now, interestingly, in the documentation, it actually says it's four 2 gigahertz cores. So I'll be very curious about that. And I also can't forget the traditional uh, celebration drink. What are we celebrating? Who cares? So, what I'm going to do, that's plugged in. I'm going to start recording with OBS. And hopefully, that'll pick up the input. This is going to my 4K capture card. And we'll see what it does, what I've got here, I'm hoping, is enough juice, and we will test this thing's power consumption too. I'll benchmark it. I'll put the results of the benchmark in the description below. When I benchmark it, I will also put a heatsink on this, because I think it most certainly deserves it. Alright, so coming back to it, I completely misread the documentation. The SPI flash is pre-flashed with the bootloader, not with an image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this on there, and I'm going to put it into flash mode, and I'm going to put their latest image on there. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Their instructions have how to do that. It is really straightforward. Um, if there's anything odd about it, I'll, of course, let you know. If you get stuck, leave a comment below. But uh, besides the specs I was telling you before, or the stats I was telling you before about there being no women on this channel, uh, YouTube also tells me that the majority of you aren't subscribed. And if you're watching this content, and if you've gotten this far into it, I don't know why the hell that would be. So if you want to support this channel, not just PCB way, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe. The reason is that it actually shows YouTube that you enjoy my content and it promotes it more. Even if you subscribe now, unsubscribe in like a week or two, I don't really don't give a shit. Or thumbs it up, that helps too. The YouTube algorithm's busted, but that's how it does. So I'm going to flash this now and I'll come back to you all shortly. Hold please. All right, everyone, this is going to be a really crappy quality ADR right now because this is the second melees that I've tried to use uh, over a month after I recorded what you just saw. And this one doesn't work, and the first one doesn't work in two different ways. So the first one did work at first, and then it just stopped. And as best I can tell, uh, going back and forth with the melees team, the SPI flash died. So I could have tried to, you know, desolder it and replace it and get it going again, but I thought this is brand new, it's not worth it at that point. So unfortunately I had to pay 20 bucks to send it to them and I'm waiting to head back. In the meantime, I finally got the motivation to unbox the second one because I did buy two because the first one as Alpha Phoenix, or Phoenix Alpha, sorry, always says goes up in flames. Now the second one appears to be completely dead out of the box. I spent the last three or so, nearly four hours sitting here playing with it and I get nothing from it. Um, it times out whether I'm trying to access it over the debug UART output or if I'm trying to access it over the download mode USB-C connection. Um, in either mode, I get nothing on UART and plugging in another device, I immediately get the debug output. So this appears completely dead in the water. Now, to make a few remarks on what I didn't get to test in the end, I'm guessing the GPU drivers don't work, but Wi-Fi does. Um, it is definitely an awesome product. I don't know if they had a bad batch or anything like that. I would be really, really curious to start using it when I get one that works. Um, now, there is a few little th things that I did see playing around. Uh, if you look into the Xlinks config, there is a timeout there, so you can probably improve the boot speed slightly by removing that. Also note that um, if you have a look at the documentation of follow to the releases, there is an April 17th latest, but then there's a version 1.0.0, which is dated before that, I think it was. Um, that doesn't say initial commit, so I'm not sure what's going on with the versioning or the images there. 
Um, I'm also very not happy that you have to use Linux basically or Unix to uh, flash the EMMC using the Android tools. Now I've got no issue with the Android tools, but at least if they could release a uh, driver for the USB gadget or fast boot, that would be great. I did try a pile of them, but none of them seemed to work. In hindsight, the ones that I tried could have actually been working, but the unit was dead. I can't really tell anymore. Um, two methods that I did essentially try was uh, one set of drivers that did install, but then didn't work, possibly because the board's dead. The other thing though, is you can use WSL2, uh, and I'll put a link below to piping through um, USB devices. So you could pipe through the serial connection and the debug connection to WSL2 and do it from there. That I imagine would actually work. So you could work around it that way with Windows. And if I get another device, I might make a video showing just how to use that. My intention was to flash the EMMC because I don't want to deal with an SD card. Um, and then to actually rip a copy of that EMMC that you can just flash yourself using Belina and a cool little tool made by Radshow where you can uh, pop an EMMC module onto a converter that turns into an SD card temporarily. Don't use it like that. But um, yeah. Uh, the last remarks are that I've, what I've read and seen, if you do an apt update and upgrade, you do get an improvement on display performance, even if it's not fully hardware accelerated or with full uh, OpenGL ES support by that point. And it also appears that um, there's both their image and then Revy OS. I'm not sure if they are the same or not, because there's also this whole ROS car thing that you can do. You'll see that in the documentation. Uh, but yeah, so... I didn't get to measure the power consumption, basically nil whilst it's sitting there, desert doorknob, and I didn't get to benchmark it because you can't benchmark a doorknob. But um, maybe there'll be a second version of this video. So in the meantime, if you have a similar experience, do let me know because I've got direct communications with the Melee's dev team and we are working on this. I'm hoping it was a fairly unique experience though because it does otherwise seem like a pretty awesomely spec'd product. So... Take care, sorry for the crappy video a month late and with no proper information, and I'll see you next time.